We have Michael Cunningham with us, not only a fitness writer, but a fitness teacher of writing. And for those of you who only read The Hours, let me recommend The Snow Queen, one of his recent books. And let me recommend reading it on a very hot summer afternoon. It's got a lot of great cold. Um, and sometimes writers don't have a connection to Tennessee Williams, but I think Mr. Cunningham does because he writes in that spirit of poetry and empathy. Empathy for people who are maybe on the fringe or troubled. So it's my great pleasure to welcome Michael Cunningham. And 
I was um, behind the gym with the room for a smoke, and I found myself puffing away at a very quick tent that's still coming out of the purse, um, <laughs> standing next to what I can only call the pirate queen of our high school. <laughs> Most schools have, have these, these people, right? She was tall and beautiful and terrifying, and we all had crushes on her. Um, and there I was with her. Um, okay, think fast. I'm, 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 I'm 15, and I'm about three, four and a half feet tall. This <laughs> <laughs> kid's not happening, nothing's working. Um, <coughs> so, but I said, but, but, okay, talk to her, say something. And I, I went into. Oh, gosh, I'm going to rip about um, how I thought Leonard Cohen was a sort of greater artist than Bob uh, Dylan. I like to think I did the same. I may have. <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of looked down at me. She was 30 feet tall. And she was grabbing the tall morale. Have you ever thought of being less stupid? <laughs> And you know, I have those. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided that I was pretty happy to whatever well, stupid that I was. <laughs> that I would have a chance with her if I stayed that, that stupid. So, uh, I think she went on. She, she was, of course, reading outside the curricula. We were reading John Steinbeck and a separate piece, which are good books. But, uh, she was reading T.S. Eliot and Jim Wolf. Um, and just you know, why don't you, be, uh, why don't you shut up about rock stars and, and start reading books with Elliot and well, I, I, I knew that they were writing, I just didn't know that they were the comics. So really, in order to impress this girl, I went to our school library, which was really like a trailer on the center box. And they didn't have any Elliot, they had this one book by Virginia Woolf, Miss <laughs> I was the only one who ever checked it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it home and read it. No, I tried to read it. I couldn't be looking at what was going on. Um, but I could see the grace and elaborateness and muscularity and strange balance of those sentences. Two parentheticals and three clauses set off by seven columns. I mean, it was like Mozart. <laughs> or, as I believe I thought at the time, oh wow, she was doing language, something like sort of what Jimi Hendrix does. <laughs> and it kind of knocked me on my my little pubescent ass. I had never seen that in ink, and using only ink and paper before. Uh, I didn't mean any good with that girl, but um, <laughs> it did me. That could change something. It really did. I I I, I hadn't I hadn't understood the kind of music that could rise up off the page using only ink, paper, and the words in the dictionary, the simplest possible tools. Um, and it I think it really turned me into a reader. And then years later, I began to write. Um, so. At a certain point, I thought, I want to write a book about, I'd like to write a not boring book about me book. <laughs> That's really where this came from. Um, it's, it's about reading and writing and being Mrs. Dalloway. Um, it started out as a book about gay men living in Chelsea, um, who, at the time anyway, be a little more, more closely resembled this 20s society of Mr. Dalvin than I felt especially happy about. Um, you know, the ageism and the, the who gets invited to the party and all. And I got a certain ways into it, and I wanted to see what I did for far from the book. Who wants a game, Mrs. Dalvin, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and anyway, I won't, I won't go on and on about it because you don't have all of the time. But, um, it slowly evolved into the book that it became, but that's, it, it really starts when I'm 15. And I go up, and I come out, and I think, okay, a book about, it, a book about reading a book, it's a gay version. No, it's not, it's, and there you go. Um, 
The Snow Queen is about um, essentially three people, two brothers and the woman who is the girlfriend of one of the brothers, um, who are variously addicted to drugs and, and have cancer. Um, it didn't sound much for some reason. Uh, <laughs> And that started, um, I, have a, I have a friend, I live in New York, I have a friend who is, let's just say a much wilder thing than I am. But he's lovely, he's so serious, he's obvious with pleasure. Um, but he's a wild boy. And um, I was home, um, in a place on 6th Avenue at the time, and he called up and said, oh, I'm in the neighborhood with a friend. Can I come over? And I said, I would love to see you. Um, but friend, will, will he steal something? <laughs> it was not out of the question. Um, <laughs> said, no, 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 she was lovely. Turning, um, and, and here was, um, you know, nutty, beloved Billy, and a very beautiful, very delicate woman. Um, I use their names. Um, and as it turned out, um, Tracy, who was still in her late 30s, had stage four cancer. Um, it was only a question of when. And we were sitting and talking, and um, she said, I I took drugs years ago, but now that I'm not, I don't see any reason not to go back to heroin. To heroin. Yeah, I know. But she said, look, <laughs> the house is burning down. Uh, fire, fire precautions are no longer necessary. It's an debatable position, but I thought, go ahead. Go ahead. And if, you need, if, you, if you need to do a little gear, I'm not into it, but go ahead. And 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 she did. And and it just made it just you can tell that it just sort of eased her pain a little bit. Believe me, I'm not advocating this. But but in the moment, it just sort of set her a little bit adrift, just enough. And we talked deep into the night about dying and about what it was like for her. And and she was just the most remarkable person. And at one point, I sort of wandered out, well, I wandered back, and um, snow had started falling. Huge, big, you know, big foot flakes the size of open chips. And Tracy had wrapped herself in a blanket. And was standing at the window watching the snow fall. And I came to the side of her. And it put my arm over her, her very frail shoulders, kind of her head here, and I thought, the only story we ever hear about people who do drugs are cautionary and shaming. Don't do this, don't do that. And I thought nobody, nobody is telling the story of a woman like this. And I thought, what's the big shot? You know, leave again, either this conversation nor the book are in any way meant to encourage anyone to do drugs. But I just, I, I, I feel like there is nothing there's nothing human that should be <clears throat> beneath or above a writer's attention. Like, if people do it, it's part of what you write about. And I really kind of wanted to write a book for Tracy, who is no longer with us. Um, there's the book, well, that we have it, but you know what I mean. So that's a couple of examples. Um, just a couple from from history, and then I want to, to, to start to play around a little. Um, Henry James, Portrait of a Lady. His only original, his only initial thought was that he wanted to write a book about a woman ground down by the wheels of convention. He was an expatriate, he was living in London, and um, out of that came Isabel Archer and Portrait of a Lady. Um, and 
part of what is part of Henry James's genius is starting from a proposition that could be fairly simplistic. This poor, this poor woman who is a victim of circumstances beyond control, she is in fact that, but she also participates. She also makes really unfortunate choices kind of based on what she's been told. And there we have Mrs. Dalloway. Okay. <coughs> he had he had spent well, there's the, the actual first novel. It's called The Temptation of St. Anthony. It's it's very he published it anyway, very surreal, it's very elaborate and, 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 and challenging. And he being that kind of guy got all his friends together and read it aloud to them. <laughs> it took them all night. <laughs> And they finished, and you look at them, and they kind of paused, and they said, this, you know, this is for his first book. He, he has no reputation, and he's very eager to be a big deal in, in literary circles in France at the time. And some stuff, oh, this is hard to say, but throw it out. <laughs> throw it out. It's not, it's not, it's not the book you want to go out there with. It's dull and convoluted, and whatever they, whatever, I don't care, but whatever it is they said. <laughs> they said, not this one. And he listened to it, and put it aside, and thought, what will I do next? And there was something in the news about a sort of petite bourgeois woman in, in, in another village to, who, to everyone's surprise, had committed suicide. And it turned out that she was in debt, and, and that's, that's been a book. A news item. And, and, and a news item that caught Robert's particular attention. There's obviously something. He, he, too, um, he too was stuck in this little, this little provincial French village. I think, I think he empathized with her sufficiently. He lived with his mother. Um, Anything wrong with your mother? He wasn't very happy about it. Um, so I think I think there was just enough enough, enough distance and enough empathy. Virginia you Woolf, know, last one, Mrs. Dalloway. Oh, which is originally called the Hours. Um, thank you, Virginia, for that. Um, if you man that it was called the Hours in the very early phases. And it was meant to be a sort of broad book, brought over the mountains, vast population about life in London after World War II. About the, the city sort of desperately trying to get back to what had been normal. And she got a certain ways into the book called The Hours work she began to realize that she as a writer was most interested in a relatively minor figure named Chris Dowell. And after a sort of painful-ish moment for her, for Wolf, she decided, you know, I want to write this, I want to write this big book because, because I'm paraphrasing, but she said it's messy. Men write books about war and they're taken seriously. Women write books about women and they're and they're ignored. Um, so she kind of had to face down what she thought at the time was was the writing of a book that was going to be doomed to obscurity from the outset. But she just could not deny to herself that Clarissa Dalloway a society hostess was more compelling to her than anything else and anybody else, and that that was the book she needed to write. And here they are. Portrait of Lady, Booker, Mrs. Dalloway, all from these sort of uncertain days. Um, I don't want us to construct our own story together, but as a warm up, um, if I was thinking about this. Why don't a story, let's think of a story we all know. We all know the story of Cinderella, right? Anyone not 
Anyone who that the that Cinderella person? Okay. Uh, and we know, we, I, we, it's ancient, we don't really know. We don't know who wrote this one. Um, but somebody wrote it, or people handed it down, and it has, it has, a, it has a fairly clear starting point. Young, young girl with a skirt, going to a wall, she can't go to the wall, and we don't know. We don't know. Um, Let's, let's try it this way. Let's see what kind of story we get if our initial impulse is, I just have kind of, this idea about a mysterious woman who goes to a party, is entirely enchanted to a man at a party, but then rushes away. Let's talk about where that story wants to go. I'm more than happy to do it, but if, if I would be even happier, say, say that's that's the starting point, and we and we don't need we don't need less slipper. We can have whatever we want. But you know what I mean? That we we're starting with an image from within Cinderella that could take us to Cinderella or could take us elsewhere. Mysterious woman at a party. She's she's. Shagging up this guy, he is smitten and he's, oh, excuse me, I have to go. And it's just gone. Can't even realize he didn't, he didn't even get her name. What could have what what's let's just there's a lot of there's a lot of stories you can take in this. And anyone anyone have any ideas? Yeah, please. She's an assassin to assassinate the guy's father, and she has a deadline, she didn't expect the um, Bewitched by him or by or seduced by him. She realized that the father's about to take off in the plane and she has adopted him. Okay. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my god. She is an assassin. Uh, she, she has a sort of a sort of date to assassinate this guy's father and is surprised to realize that his son is as charming as he is. Let, okay, let's let's uh, let, let's okay, let's take the two to get, yeah, please. Oh, it's not very different. I just I want to work on this one, and then we'll we'll do a few. Um, yeah, please. She leaves a parking ticket from the airport where she has been previously setting up a bomb. Oh. And she leaves it on the table by her drink as she scurries away, okay. and our young man picks it up and begins to ponder. Parking ticket for his father's plane. Okay, so she leaves a parking she leaves a parking ticket for the airport, um, and the guy picks it up and foils the attempt. That's good. I think I think what we want to do is it's, it's an undefined. It's, it's not just an accident, right? Right. We don't like accidents on the picture, but but yes, yes, yes. She wants. She kind of okay in this version. She actually wants to be stopped. Yeah, yeah, without quite realizing it. She's in such a hurry, she, and, 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 and the parking ticket doesn't get into a bag, and the guy comes and, and foils the attempt. Um, did he get together every morning? So that's going to be hard to see a woman who's going to kill your father. Well, I'm going to tear along. Maybe he didn't want to Or maybe he didn't, okay, see, maybe he didn't like his father. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> So many stories here. In this in this version of the story, the young the young man realizes what's going to happen, but just there be. Okay. So that he can he can pretend to be shocked when actually he's figured it out all along. Right? But he hired her. He hired her. Oh, he hired her. He doesn't know who he is asking him to. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, lots of lots of lots of lots Yeah. The evil stepmother of Cinderella is the assassinate the person who she's assassinating, his mistress, and that's how she became she's a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just let's just think in terms of uh, something that most most stories have wide action of crisis and sort of out. And I think we want to, this is not how we would work as writers, but um, 
various options. She, she foiled, he, foiled, he foiled the assassination. He, does, he doesn't foil the assassination. What in Gogol, the Russian writer once said, that the true unwritten last line of every story is, and nothing was ever the same again after that. <laughs> and so I think we want to keep being mindful of the fact that on one hand, we move these people around, they're assassins, they're, they're whatever, but they're also human, and we have to think about the repercussions. You know, we have to actually connect with these people. And, and, and part of what we're saying to, the, to our readers is, not only these people are extreme and interesting, but they matter. I would not be telling you a story about some bunch of assholes of, of no consequence. So how do we how do we give this more weight? In the, in the, you know, what I, 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 I think the idea, so, so say, let's go with, um, let's go with the prince realizes what's going to happen, doesn't intervene. What would happen after that? I think he remembered his father was abusive. His father was abusive. Yeah. And that would bring up the memories. He had he had he had memories of, of, of having been abused by his father. Um, but how does this change his life? He inherits all the money. He inherits all the money. He can't win a finger at him. Uh huh. So uh huh. But this is still a caper. This is still a B movie. Okay. How do we turn it into literature? I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you a quick example. In the news a while ago, um, huge headlines of uh, high school high school cheerleader <coughs> exposed as high, having high and paid the to kill her father. That's journalism. Then it turns out that her father can be using that. That's literature. Right? And I mean we have to care about these people. We can't just blow them off like this. It's not a movie. It's not, it, yeah. This all took place in Venezuela, and his father was a very nasty dictator in Venezuela. Okay, nasty dictator in Venezuela. So we, we're still in movie land. We're still in movie land. I want us to get, I want us to, get to literature land. Because these people are, have soul. Because these people are smart and interesting and complicated as we are. They are not prop for moving around. It is not. It's not a product. It's, a, it's, an es it's an exploration of what actually happens, the damage and recovery that happens in a life. And we, if, we, if we take these people less than seriously, what does that make us? Just people in a room talking about invented people who we just knock around like matchsticks. And that is not what the writer does. Please. Well, it's that happened very quickly as the assassination happen and then you can learn more about each character when they're in another part of their life but eventually she knows who he is mm -hmm. and she is mm -hmm. she finds him and stuff happens and stuff so happens okay, okay. yes please. well just so cinderella her family only for back to the friend so whatever policy the dictator had passed, it had inadvertently cost the death of her family because he didn't stand up for whatever political side they were on. Okay. So, so now we care about her because she lost her family and this is now her political, spiritual, moral duty to carry this out. And yet she kind of likes this guy now. We have a reversal here where we, where it's something that seems like the cold blooded assassins actually pursue them in the death. Yeah, this 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 movie might be yes, but then yeah. Uh, well when you told when you set the story up, I mean the only thing I could think of was that this guy will do anything to find out who she is. I mean that's what it would resonate with me. I mean, even if I mean to make a bunch of events you know, that's kind of decoration, I mean the heart of it is right, you know, I mean what would interest me to do would be to follow his call to find this woman. I mean, what would he do? You know, I mean, that's the only story for me. But what would you do? This is, I'm so glad you said this, because this segues us into the second, the second approach that I, that I was thinking about. Um, so we, 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 we talked, we talked about a, a mysterious woman who has to look like you read it. Suddenly, um, now our departure point is a man 
meets a woman at a party, um, is infatuated with her and loses track of her. She then she's gone. And he let's take this from the from the original, searches the city for her. He searches the city for her. Um, he has this incredibly intense interlude with her, he, and then she's just gone. And so he starts to look for her. I, I have some ideas, but I would rather hear your ideas first. Anybody? What would have to get, please? Well, as he looks for her, he meets all these people who know about his father. So he's also learning more about the complex. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. He learns more about his father. We can teach the father. We can also let the father go. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm fine with this kind of, like, I'd rather like the assassin thing. But I don't, I don't want to do, I, I, I don't want to do it again. That's, so, let's, let's say, let's eliminate, although we have infinite possibilities, let's eliminate corrupt father, assassin, and move into something that feels a little more like our own lives. Yes, please. Can we suggest that the woman is just married? Um, yeah. So that the narrative is a little more <coughs> internal struggle on her part of disappearing, and then the search is like more realistically I don't know, doable, looking for someone who's just you know someone else who refuses to share who she is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The woman is married. He's looking for her, and <coughs> she's not out there really. I mean, she is, but mm -hmm. but she's not available. Um, I like that. Let's 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 so so let's let's work with that, please. I'm thinking maybe she might have known him uh, a couple of decades earlier. She was in love with him in high school. He crossed paths at this party. She didn't recognize him. She lost weight. She had a nose job. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she knew it was him. She needed, although she was beautiful now. Um, Career or something, she needed that. She needed one more piece of validation. Oh, sorry. Validation, yeah. One more piece of validation. <coughs> now we are going to that. Easy. So she, has, she had come to this party and all got a sort of perfected version of herself to see if she can get them interested. Maybe she <clears> heard <throat> that he's going to be there. Yeah. Or maybe some other characters, uh, acquaintances that might have led her to this party. Remember that the mm -hmm. TV movie Girl Most Likely to be Sapper Channing. So she had this, she needs one more thing to make her feel whole or to make her feel valuable or, or attractive. Or not. It could be some deep emotional thing. Maybe she didn't know when he was back in high school that he had his own issues and, you know, communications that never happened suddenly reveal themselves if he does kind of find out. I'm going to, I like that. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to suggest, because I have a dark term in mind, that where this is headed is, yeah, she finally got it. She got to be the hot girl she didn't feel like in high school, and so what? You know, she goes home and looks in the mirror and thinks, all right, now what? Now I'm just like, right? Or something, or something more fun than that. But, but you know, this is what I'm, 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 look, I'm looking for the setup and then and then why it mattered. Yeah. I feel like an assassin is too huge. Oh, yeah, we know the assassin. High school is perhaps pure off. Yeah. I would prefer to see them have a conversation which would have to be incredibly carefully written, mm -hmm. in which each of them give one another clues about themselves. And after, the party after she departs quickly, he follows the clues that she's given him based on what she said, and she herself is, comes back and is interested based on what he said. And they completely never are able to find one another because they misinterpret the clues so obviously, or so stupendously, or so <coughs> or whatever. A tiny, tiny conversation leads into this massive swirl of complete incomprehension of one another. Although they begin to search for one another. That's good. I, I, I mean, I'm going to help try to help paraphrase it. I, I think I'm afraid people not able to hear it. Um, yeah, they have had this, this very intense conversation from which each of them has taken an idea of who the other person is. They sort of embark on the search for each other, but it becomes increasingly apparent that they are each 
sort of telling them misread the clues. And so they're not really looking for each other. Yeah, so they're, they're looking for the projection. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine, yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, and, 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 and my, and my, in my dark version, there we just leave them sort of looking for a person who no doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes no resolution is, is, a, is, a, is a resolution. Yes. How? Yeah. Um, uh, and any, anyone who's pursued a fantasy, you know, a, a person who doesn't really exist helps you know kind of fantasy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and, and this and this speaks very directly to a human experience that nothing's universal, but. Yeah, yeah, please, sir. Well, I was just thinking, you know, writers maybe sometimes get too much ahead of themselves when they start to stack a, a bunch of events. I mean, I think, you know, Colbert reads the article in the newspaper, you know, he's probably got a feeling for this woman mm -hmm. somehow or other, and he probably followed it rather than trying to make a bunch of advanced creations of the targets he was trying to hit. And, you know, if, or if an idea walks into your head, you yeah. follow it. Right, right, right. Why, you, right. You, don't, you, don't, you don't try to set up a bunch of problems. I mean, I, you know, your story, I mean, you, you could follow the woman or you could follow both, but you're, to me, it's more about following and following, you know, the, the, the heart of it. You know, Absolutely. Where, where, where the heat is. Absolutely. For you, because yeah. I mean, if it's going to be a novel, as you would know, you're going to have to have something that's generating an awful lot of interest for you in order to push yourself into the misery of you know, maybe years of life. And, and the failures that yeah. you're going to encounter as you write. So I think it's more that you, you know, you, you've got to be followed. Right. No, absolutely. Can okay. everybody, everybody hear that? Yes. Yeah, be followed. Yes. yes, yes, yes. I can tell you that um, some writers I love know exactly what's going to happen all along, and other writers don't. Um, I'm of the latter type. I find that if I know too clearly what the ending is going to be, the characters tend to become sort of employees of the story, mm -hmm. yeah. whose job it is to deliver it to its destination. Um, this, this, this being a discussion and an exercise, I wanted us to sort of think where the story, these, these stories are happening might go. And often, as a writer, you need some sense of where it's headed. I would want, you know, it can be a little bit of a sentence by sentence by sentence with no idea. Um, so, often you have a fairly good idea of its part and its conclusion, but the important part is you have to let go of that. In, in the in the in the course of like, I'm just speaking for myself. You believe me, you get five different writers in here, so you get five very different versions of just how how to work. Um, but no, I agree completely. Most of most writers I know either don't know how a story is going to end, but think they know. <laughs> and then and then I, I actually think about this. One of the marks of success, of the success of a story or a novel, is it, it's not from the player to write. Mm -hmm. um, no, and this is this is it's to some degree artificial, but I, I do I I, I, want, I wanted us to take things to a conclusion so that I guess I would say we share the sense that from a relatively simple image. We can go all kinds of places, and so I, it has felt necessary to discuss the destination in ways that are much more for group conversation than it would be for the actual writing of a story. Probably sometimes the destination is, is the inception. I mean, I imagine the story of Dad and the snowfall. And the, you know, it, it probably that's where he's going. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, but yeah. Uh, I myself, I wasn't there. I know, I know, which I had been. Um, well, you know, Faulkner, as I lay dying, mm -hmm. he started the last line and wrote forward. Mm -hmm. Again, you do it any which way you can. Um, but again, for for the purposes of our time here together today, I want, I, I want us to talk about 
about a shape, about something that can be conjured out of very little and um, can go any any number of ways from um, the transformed woman who goes home and realizes that all she's done is gotten is gotten to zero. Um, now she now she looks like any pretty high school girl in her in her 30s. Um, to the more sort of I don't want to use the word existential, but I did it this hour. I don't have anything better. Uh, of uh, people, people sort of wandering around in search of, of, of someone who is suggested but doesn't actually exist. Um, in the writing, you might change it, but these these are these are targets. These are these are goals, and and again. It's, you, you, you start with, with a, a chance to get a party, and you can go here, you can go there. The pan over here? Yes? I was just saying, the last thing you said, that they're searching for each other, um, and after a point, they realize that it's only find themselves. They never find each other, all that searching takes them back to who they are. Yeah, and yeah. It takes it someplace else, I guess. It takes the story someplace else. Oh, no, I, I think it, it, yes, yes, it actually takes the story someplace else. I think in both of these two examples, but if you're, if, you're, if you're kind of writing and thinking in terms of, oh, oh, central character, you, you think it's going to really matter that, you probably, that the hot boy finally has a crush on you 20 years after high school, you listen to that. Um, this is in the back of your mind, but you know, you're, we're taking her seriously. But that, or, oh, you really think that you're going to find the person of your wildest imaginings after conversation with everybody. So, yeah, yeah. Um, we can spend seven or seven or eight other words. Um, point being, it's, it usually starts from something small. And if you let it, if you're open to the possibilities, uh, it, can, it can turn into the dead. <laughs> Which, in essence, we don't we don't know how it arrived for for James and Joyce, but it's really in essence about about a a, a, a long married couple of a bad night, a really bad night. Yes. Can the James have worked? But it's a fun spelling idea. I thought it was French, but mm -hmm. anyway, as I recall, he said the portrait of a lady is too. Guy sitting in a wall. That was his original uh, image that took him to Isabel Archer. Right, but a the portrait of a lady and people is struck with two people sitting on a lawn. And, and he said that's the image that drew him into the story. And so what I'm trying to point out is that that doesn't seem to have anything to do with what he came up with, which is a young woman trying to. Who seem to be free from weather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, that, I'm just validating that. It doesn't necessarily affect the story you're going to write. That is exactly your opinion. You're three places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. That you, that, that, that you start from, you need a finite point, and then you don't know. What, what story is going to come out of this? My memory is that he could not bear Dorothea in Middle He didn't like what, you know, mm -hmm. when he decided to rewrite Middle March and thus Pretty Little Lady, which is a much bigger structure. And I think a lot of, I mean, I think those big structures, like the Pacific <laughs> thing, is something like an element of mm -hmm. a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I, I heard that, that, um, that Henry James um, didn't, didn't like George Eliot's Middle March and, and, and sort of wrote his version of Dorothea. And yet, and yet both women seem to have made important marriages <laughs> out, of, out, of, out, of, out of conscience. You know, it, it's, um, oh, Henry James, why did George Eliot get to you like that? Because <laughs> 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 Middle Point really is not as significant. Anti Middlemarch that he might have thought he was going to write. But he wanted to see 
what if you went into her consciousness yeah. how do you make a bad marriage? Not that she wouldn't make a bad marriage. But right. you take you know, send it in at contemporary time and then what it's like what you were saying is what does it do to her inside, which is yes. a magical yes. thing. It's a magical thing to carry <clears throat> Bow down. The hand over there. I'm bowing. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. Best thing to do. I'm tired of talking about other writers. So. <laughs> 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 um, any specific? Well, what you started with, it strikes me. It's my favorite of your books. I love all of them. Thank you. It's my favorite. It's most certainly being somewhat different, but I'm not sure how it's different. But I love that. <coughs> You. Um, Specimen Days is, is a sort of triptych. It's essentially the same story, but told in three different genres as a ghost story, as a thriller, and as a science fiction story. And we follow permutations of the same three characters, but treated as a ghost story, a thriller, and a science fiction story. And then there's, yeah. That's, um, um, oddly enough, that book started with my love of Walt Whitman. Um, who figured in the book? I thought, hey, I made a fortune out of you before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, so he, he variously figures in, 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 for instance, in the, in the third section, um, the, the, man, the male character has, has become a uh, sort of android. And, in order, and somebody decided that they, they were, they couldn't see them still human qualities in the, these manufactured beings, and, um, and they were so without empathy, they were kind of dangerous, and so, so, well, let's, let's, let's put a poetry chip in their heads. So he's subject these fits of reciting ball women. Um, and really, really, that whole thing started when I was uh, reading women um, at night at home, and there is a line, this will be a paraphrase, somewhere in Thieves of Grass, there's O Colorado. Are we alone? Is it night? Are we alone together? Is the lamp lit? And I thought, we are. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. And um, it jumped up. I, I, um, suddenly, time is continuing to collapse. And I sort of viscerally understood what we, we all know is that Walt Whitman was once alive, and then was no longer alive, and then I came along. But he did exactly what he meant to do. He asked for projected mm -hmm. and was in the room. And was and I could and I was in that room imagining him and was but she was in he was in his room imagining me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well what should I write a book about that? I'm just saying. <laughs> but that was it. Yeah, yeah, and then all the other connected. Yes, uh insert your hand. Yeah, I mean, just very quickly, I mean, a few people here were mentioning character and everything, and I agree with all of that. Um, you know, returning very briefly, I promise we won't draw on this much longer, um, on Henry James. Um, and his, in his prefaces, he talks about the germ or the central intelligence, um, if you recall. So I think with Isabel Archer, the interesting thing about the gentleman having tea in the lawn is that the whole conversation and the, and the sort of gist of it is this character that we don't meet. So uh, the sense of the character, I think it has to start with character for me. Uh, yeah. At least the pieces that I find most interesting are pieces in which there's an exploration of character. So Portrait of Lady is interesting to me because of Esquel Archer, and so would Cinderella be interesting if it's based on her. And uh, you know, I like the various suggestions, and I, the one that I like the most in terms of the ending conclusion is, you know, a lot of times we want things in life as human beings, and we get them. It really doesn't change anything. In other words, okay, let's go to Hawaii. It's going to be beautiful. And then you do all of these things. You 
years of planning, saving all that, you get there, and then really, I mean, I'm not saying that there's no magic. I'm talking about life goes on as usual, and I think even though you might, she might achieve the objective of being the bell of the ball that she wasn't able to be 20 years ago, um, the interesting part for me is what happens afterwards. So maybe the story for me is well, whatever sort of plot points are there, those things are achieved, but I think like you were mentioning, what is it, what is the so what after that? Yeah, I will, again, this, this is your story, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so if you have that realization, but then is that good news? Is that bad news? Yeah. Is it, or is it, uh, that, you know what I mean, like, like what happened, is, is, is she liberated? Mm -hmm. Is she, is she just, in order she can own no, the nose wasn't quite small enough. You know, it, it, there's lots of places you can go. Please, it's your story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, it, it would be interesting for her to realize um, that, you know, this conversation two of them had, he wasn't fawning over her looks. Of course, she was attractive, which might have been the initial draw, but she's still the same person inside. And this is like a very well-worn, Mm -hmm. but um, she would finally realize that she's she's substantial and uh, <coughs> um, has plenty to say. There you go. I don't want to leave, but I have. Oh no! Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. And I'm sorry I wasn't sitting at the back. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for leaving me from the notion that you were just outraged. <laughs> Considered in American fiction, um, a world we, awaiting Isabel Archer that involves two people who have a lawn, mm -hmm. who have time for tea, is already kind of about Isabel Archer. Um, so yeah, I mean, these, these images are. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not just a bare stage. Um, oh, uh, you know. You think I think the point that gave her enough money that she didn't make any choices. Yeah, who are they? I forget. It's not touching the mind, but he has to die first. Yeah. 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 And that whole passage, you can look at every line very carefully, and it's rich with significance. But. Yeah, anyway, anyway, but the county change is, is not our main, it's all we have any concern. But you know, yeah, that's it. Um, this is back to specimen days. Um, mm -hmm. I've been waiting to ask this question for years, so let me ask this. After I read it and I loved it, and I didn't, honestly, I didn't think I would, because it didn't seem like my kind of book. But anyway, um, I was left, and maybe, maybe you didn't even think of this, maybe it was subconscious, but I was left with the thought that it was also, besides Paul Whitman, it was also your uh, divine comedy book. Like it, there was Virgil throughout the book. There was a Virgil character, and I was just wondering if that was your conscious thought, or was I putting that into the book? Um, the, 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 the specimen is sort of sent out of Dante and Virgil. Um, you are the fact that I wasn't thinking about that doesn't mean it's not there. Right. <laughs> um, Let's get back to your very good point. Uh, a lot of a novel is unconscious, which we don't really, there's no way for us to allow for that today in an hour and 15 minutes. But most writers I know um, do some things because. You think that's that's what the story needs, but we also point to things I don't know, it just feels right. Um, and go back over it and you take 
take out some things that seem obvious and wrong. But you also take some things wrong. I don't know. It just, I just feel like that belongs. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you why. And that is why, in a certain sense, the writer is an authority on her or his work. But also, this is why there are academics and critics, the good ones. Um, because in most, in most novels I know, there are things of which the writer was not consciously aware. But that, uh, I, I was just saying, uh, you know, Jennifer Egan, oh, yes. she came and talked in my class. She was so great. And one of the things she said, a couple of things, <coughs> and the conscious mind was really no help in writing fiction. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How's it going? I'm curious. What about? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's 11 minutes. Yeah, 15 more minutes. All right, 15 more minutes. Yes, please. Um, so I'm trying to craft this question in my mind. This is actually very important to me mm -hmm. because I have very much enjoyed the hours. Don't hate me. I'll go buy them all right after. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're a man yeah. writing in women's voices. Right. And this is something, and you seem to just very boldly step into it. I don't know what you're struggling behind the scenes. And everything very very true and I really appreciate what you just shared about your fucking addiction uh, because now like, that makes sense to me like this is something you went through with a friend but I know I struggle writing characters that are not my sexual orientation or race and like how do you step into that but make it true like what process do you recommend? A really good question um I was having dinner with a friend last night. We were, we were talking about this, about, about the, whole, the whole question. We seem to be, if anything, heating up yeah. about where, what our parameters are as writers. How far can we stray from our own experience before we begin to exploit and colonize people who are not us? Um, I lean toward as few boundaries as possible because I think the other the other the other direction ultimately leads to you can only write about yourself and you can't do that. Um, you don't know what else said thing I've always liked. She said that I can't I don't think you have to know I don't think you have to live the life. I don't think you, I think you can set a, a novel in a walking camp without having work in a walking camp. But I don't think you can write about an emotion you haven't felt. And that seemed like really good advice to me. And certainly when I am writing about women, I think about people, what feelings we have that might not be about our gender through the understanding that gender, the gender experience is not immaterial. And then, during the hours, I show it to some women. You know, you act, and, and that's also for me because who's, who's an authority on what it's like to be a woman. But you know, I I got some really good input from some of my women friends who are great readers. Like my friend Marie said of of Clarissa and Richard, she would be less stern. Not that, that, not that's what, and that's what I can see. Um, he's not saying that all women would would be kinder to Richard, but that this woman would be. And I had a good sense to listen to her. Um, and I do think the farther you move from your own experience, the more people <coughs> have to be. And the only one to just show it to people who is kind is more like that. Um, but yeah, I do think we, I, I refuse to accept that. Limitation Well, I was just going to say, I know you can understand why you don't want to talk about the kind of mysterious because it's not, you can't say much about it. It mm -hmm. just happens or it doesn't happen. So you can't teach it, you can't, it just doesn't happen or it does. But a friend of mine, uh, a writer, was in a full festival in Dublin and he was in a bar at the Shelton Hotel and 
Harold Pinscher was there, and he went and sat next to Harold Pinscher, and he said, so what's next, Harold? <laughs> and, uh, I was a chair with a blue dress. That was it. He yeah. just had that, he had to figure out what interested him about the blue dress and the chair. And so then you're sort of serving it. Right, 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 right. You're serving the blue dress and the chair in some way, and that's probably what it feels like if you ever did write it. I think that's right. Can everybody hear that? Harold Pinter at, at, at a bar, just shout more on Cowan and Melvin, and somebody asks, so Harold says, oh, I don't know. It's my chair and blue dress. Um, I think I could have been a little more precise about what I could have been talking about. We're, we're talking about step after that. Yes. Uh, because, because there has to be an act, whatever Harold Pinter ended up writing, it, it, it can't have just been a play about chair and blue dress. But that was. That was, and that's the thing I feel like, well, who knows? Um, but, yeah, it, 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 often, it often starts with something more ephemeral than a woman in a blue dress sitting in a particular kind of chair. If, if that's well, what it went. would probably have to, he would, it would probably have to be something in that image that subconsciously he knew would pass him. You know, something in his personality that and react and there's some seed in it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That, that attracts something in him that he would have power. Not all of us would, would when that's okay, um, what's your most fundamental idea for a, a story of play? We would say, oh, I, I see a chair in the dress. Mm -hmm. But we would see something. You know, mm -hmm. name, name two images that, or three images that feel compelling to you even though there's no obvious story coming from them. And yeah, and I think those are the age you know, and, and, and the stories already start. I'm wondering if the image is not the important thing, rather than a situation. It seems like to me the situation would be the second thing. The image and is the important thing, the situation the image, is yeah. But we might be confused if we start with a situation. Um, you might be confused with some of the situation. I, you know, I think that is... I mean, it's thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the image versus the the situation, I think that is entirely, it's all about what works for you. Um, some of us work from, some of us work one way, some of us work, work the other way. Situations are about emotions. Images are about the world. I, I can't... This is, this, is, this is where we start to get into the mystery of it. Um, and really, 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 I think the ultimate answer to how to enter a book is, oh God, it never works for you. <laughs> Can you talk about maybe some of your, when you started to try and develop on your first idea, trying to get the story and flesh it out, why it matters and all that. And you kind of didn't get where you wanted to go when you went back. Oh yeah. I that do, uh, do I do I make false starts, yeah. if you will? Oh, all the time, all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For every book I publish, I probably have to run away on the books or other pages. Um, there's a hand up back there, and I don't forget. Tell me if you, if you want to do this. Um, you want to spin a very quick story out of a couple of images? Let's do another pair. What do we what do we what do we get from a chair and some dress? <laughs> so we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of a higher escort, though. She, her dress is over the chair while she's entertaining a client who may be of some background of importance or maybe not of any importance whatsoever. Okay, so, so the, blue, the blue dress is draped over the chair by a woman who is working. And, and, and so the story is, is going to be about 
her relationship to either, either this particular person or yeah okay there we go let's have another, let's, let's just let's just pop them again back um, the the woman there's a woman wearing the blue dress on standing on the chair and her mother is hemming it because she's going to go to the prom tomorrow there you go all right yeah blue dresses yes the blue is navy blue of a of a plain one uh -huh. and the chair has been she changed <coughs> the chair in some way <coughs> Trying to figure out how to answer for it. Oh, so she, oh, she, 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 she cleans the chair. She, 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 she cleans in, in a fluid family's home. Yeah. And she's going to have to add an answer to her answers for this chair. There we go. And so we'll get into the dynamics of sort of, I guess, Roma kind of thing. American class. Mm -hmm. okay. so you're talking about there's not North American fiction about class. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this blue dress belongs to a clean one. Please. The blue, blue dress has been left there on the floor. Uh huh. We don't know what happened or who left it or why. But we're gonna want to we're gonna want to figure that out. <laughs> 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 Because you could probably send send out a magazine that sort of just goes, there's a blue dress lying on the floor by the chair. Who mm -hmm. stop? <laughs> <laughs> Who has the loose hands spoken um, yet? Um, yes, please. There's a blue dress on the chair because the way it's the dress that's been chosen to bury the mother. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we've got a couple more. And then I'm going to say you out. Yeah. It was the same. Uh, she, same uh, idea. The woman is buried in the blue dress. Yeah. The coffin is open, and maybe her uh, husband sits in the chair and she's feel angry or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. And that, yes. Um, an adolescent trans girl has stolen this dress from her sister's closet and is working the courage to try on a dress for the very first time. Blue dress, chair, what? <laughs> Ten, uh, however many. Equally promising, rich story. So, to your point, it can come from so many things. Um, but I, 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 I think I, I think people talk about is is um, what what what. Um, there, there's something equally mysterious that engenders the blue chair and the dress. <laughs> but the story really starts with the blue chair and the dress. And then beyond that, we really can't know even even ourselves. Yes. Since we're talking about images and the story, how did you feel about the movie? How did I feel about, about the movie so version of the hours? I, I, I really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Which might make me the only living <laughs> the movie version of the book. But did yeah, that yeah. Speak along the way for your opinion at all, or did that go? Um, yes. But I didn't. I didn't like the adaptation. That was David Hare breaking this thing, right? So the novelist, the novelist participation is yes. They asked. They asked for my opinion. They were. They were actually very generous toward me. But I think the general fear of the novelist is going to say, but that's not like this book, which I actually wouldn't have done. I didn't do. It, but but yeah. Short answer is um, I actually wanted. David here, who I respect enormously, to do his version. I would, I would happy to answer the occasional question, but I didn't want it to be a permutation of the story I wrote. I wanted it to be his take on the story. Yeah. It's about time to end. Is there, is there any, any last thing you want to say? Yes, in fact. Okay, so when we started pitching the ideas for the blue dress and a the chair, there was you know half a dozen or so. Yeah. So I think most of us could sit in the room and come up with ideas for stories. How do we pick the right one to write? <laughs> I don't know if there's a wrong one to write. I think you pick the one that feels most compelling to you. Would you do you feel like you would rather write a story? About a domestic worker who's moved by a chair, or would you rather write a story about um, a woman who's about to be buried in a dress? You kind of have to it, finally, finally, it has to be what's most compelling to you. And hey, sometimes the one of the one of the purposes of writing for a craft 
is to see if you really want to write this story at all. But I, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't make good economic sense, but a certain amount of writing has to do with simply finding out whether it's the right story for you to write. And being true to yourself if it isn't. I'm sorry. Being true to yourself if it isn't. Yeah. If you get into it, don't be afraid to, like, like you said, put it away. Put it away. Yeah, yeah, under, understand that we spend all of our lives learning how to write. And any, even, even a venerable older writer is somebody who's left behind the record of her or his attempts to learn how to write a novel by writing. That's what we do. One more. I read this 20 years ago that never wrote anything out. And I'm like, I've written stories and I'm writing at 20 years later. I come back to them. Find new story. Yeah, yeah. Say, so put them aside and see see if they they, they can come back to life. And then find a way. Um. <laughs> 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 <laughs>